Okay, we are working on the York package unit today. I am changing out a blower control board. What happened is the blower was running constantly, and the homeowner said they smelled something burning. The blower control board had energized the strips intermittently, and that was causing uh, the burning smell. So what we, that's what we have here today. So we're going to change this blower control board and make sure everything's working all right. You see this styrofoam mess stuff here? I actually put that in because there's so much mildew and disgusting stuff in here. But something had to be done about it. The homeowner was having problems with their allergies. So I decided to put a little bit of this stuff in here, glue it down, and uh, a little bit easier to clean. and a lot a lot nicer than what was there before I'll say that. Here's our old control board. As you see there's some damage in here and some damage there was some over here if I remember correctly yeah the relay we'll look at it when it comes out. We'll take off the plugs because that'll be easy to match up because they only go a certain way as you see. there that's gonna be a problem yeah that's gonna be a problem Have to see what we can do about that I'll go ahead and slide the new board underneath it get it in place so we can wire it up The new board looks a little different, but the same overall. It's our fuse, relays, old harnesses, low voltage connections. A couple of different connections. You have the ones for the back here, and the ones in the front. So the inside of my screwdriver. is in place. We got common. Got our reversing valve. A reversing valve solenoid coil, whatever you want to call it. W1 W2 And our wide terminal. See some of the damage to the board here, here, and what is effectively underneath this pin and this relay here. So she is. Okay, what I did here was the plug 
but the heater was damaged so I went and bought I didn't want to have to buy an entire new heater because it made no sense so I went and I found a, uh, a heater from the York supplier that was pretty uh, it was a bargain priced heater that had been sitting there for a while so now I'm just making the connections to the new plug and I'm going to heat that up and seal it up A little bit extra insulation, a little bit extra support right there. On kind of low speed, just sort of tensioning up as best as I can. Okay, so with a little bit extra insulation, a little extra support. It's good to go. Cut off the other two leads because they're not going anywhere. We can plug it back in. Let's plug back in. Almost looks like it belongs there. Almost. Well, I got done with my stuff here, and I uh, I was just going to hook up the mega ohm meter uh, to make sure that whatever had caused our electrical problem was not going to be an issue anymore. And I got a low reading, low being bad as far as uh, impedance. So I hooked up one of our windings of our compressor here to one of our tubes here that I could fit it on, and we were relatively low there, 40, I got up to about 60, so we are pretty low. Uh, I think we have something else going on here, but that's not a real good sign either. Okay, we got the crankcase heater lead here, coming out the compressor. It is off the chart, so it is just fine. So. As you see, it's just fine. Now we have the leads hooked up, making sure they're not touching the cabinet there for the outdoor fan motor. And it is just fine. Yep. Okay, the next thing I did over here is the heater. You have the leads for the element. I toned out the lead for the element against ground, and it uh, had a path to ground. So, luckily I did buy that cheap heater. I can replace this with that. And hopefully uh, that'll get us up in the proper range. Now the compressor was a little weak. So we're going to be looking for 60 mega ohms. Because that's what the compressor uh, insulation was measuring. So we'll uh, put the new heater in. See how we do. Okay, we got our new heater here. Uh, it is off the chart, so it is good to go. Uh, evidently, some of those insulators have worn out on the other heater. And allowed it to go to ground. So we're going to go ahead and switch this out. 
Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of fancy work with this heater since it has that plate on the front, but I'll take the plate off and it should work just fine. Okay, we got the heater plugged back in. We got a new heater in. We have our lead up there on the contact and one on the door. Here we are. Not exactly uh, spectacular, but a lot better than having a grounded out heater. So we're just looking at a compressor that might be headed out the door. Uh, but as for today, we've solved our problem.